Farming is the name of the game that is Borderlands. I'd say that farming for legendary gear is one of the most important aspects of the Borderlands franchise. Borderlands 3 is, of course, no exception to that. However, farming in Borderlands 3 has been a very rocky ride. Borderlands 3 has gone from Borderlands 1-like world drop farming, to legendaries exploding out of every enemy, to the more traditional Borderlands 2-like dedicated drop farming. And while it seems to be pretty set at that final type, there is still a bunch of gear in Borderlands 3 that is so irritating to farm for that you're better off just farming world drops for them still. Class mods and artifacts especially come to mind, but there are even certain weapons that are just horrible to farm from their dedicated source. Hey everyone, I'm Constant Canadian, and this is the 5 best world drop farms in Borderlands 3. Before we get into the video, I'm curious to know. What is the longest amount of time you have ever spent farming for a single item in the Borderlands series? Did you end up getting what you were farming for? Let me know in the comments down below. And remember, if you find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Starting off the list, we have the Scrap Trap Nest. I'm sure most of the community already knows that the Scrap Trap Nest is an insane source of experience later in the game. However, what's not so well known is that the Scrap Trap Nest can also be a really good source of world drop gear, like class mods and artifacts. This method does have a few caveats though. It's best done on Mayhem 10 rather than 11, which immediately will put a lot of people off, and of course, since it is the Scrap Traps, you will need DLC 1 for the game. The way this method works is essentially, you turn Mayhem up or down to Mayhem 11, or any Mayhem level you wish as long as it has an easy modifier, and then you re-roll your modifiers until the easy modifier rolls as loot explosion. At this point, you can farm the scrap traps just like you would for experience. With the loot explosion modifier active, as long as you're hitting critical hits, every scrap trap will be its own loot pinata. What's super cool about this specific farm is that the scrap traps will actually work with in-game events as well, meaning that you can turn on Bloody Harvest, Broken Hearts, and Revenge of the Cartels, and the scrap traps will actually spawn the respective pieces for the event. As is the case with everything on this list, you can always equip the Schluter artifact for more world drops, although here, I don't really think it's necessary. Next up on the list is a farm as old as the game itself, Loot Pinata Bosses. When I say Loot Pinata Bosses, most of you probably think of the same one, our old pal Grave Ward. However, there are a bunch of bosses in Borderlands 3 that are just Loot Pinatas waiting to be popped. Just to name a few, Kilovolt, The Ruiner from DLC 3, Jackpot from DLC 1, Captain Tron and pretty much any boss that you can kill quickly. These farms aren't ideal for those on older generation consoles though, as load times can be absolutely painful during these farms. These farms are really straightforward, so I won't go too much into detail about them, but they are certainly lucrative. Next up is a farm that is insanely helpful for farming those tough to find artifacts and class mods like the Phase Zerker, Launchpad, Red Fang, and the Deathless. A lot of these items are locked behind the trials, which sucks, but it's also ironic because that's exactly what we're going to farm for them. The trials in Borderlands 3 are probably one of the most slept on pieces of content in the game. For anyone who doesn't know, trials are short, mini takedowns that can be fought by picking up their missions at 6 individual lodestones throughout the game's map. Depending on your mayhem level and how well geared you are, trials can take anywhere from 4 minutes to 10 minutes per run. And a lot of class mods are in the loot pool of the trial bosses already, with a 50% drop chance. But that's not even the best part. Upon completion of the trial, you are given an Iridian chest. If you manage to complete all of the optional objectives on the way, this chest will always be full of legendary class mods and artifacts, and maybe the occasional skin. If you fail to get all of the optional objectives, you will still get a few legendary items in the chest. However, given the fact that you're just farming for the class mods and artifacts with this farm, you can set the Mayhem level right down to 1 if you're having trouble with it, as both class mods and artifacts are unaffected by Mayhem level. The best strategy for farming the trials is either pick the one that you can beat the quickest, or the one with the boss who drops the class mod you're looking for, crank Mayhem down to 1, and farm until your heart drops or the item does. Another insanely good source of world drops is Freddy the Traitor from DLC 1. Most of you probably see Freddy as a traitorous jerk who never did anything other than dress poorly. But when I look at Freddy, all I see is quite possibly the fullest loot pinata in Borderlands 3. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, Freddy's fanny pack is absolutely full of legendary gear. From DLC 1 specific stuff, to anything in the base game too. The only real downside to this farm is that you need to clear a couple of enemies out before you can even fight Freddy. But when you do end up fighting him, he is glitched at level 2 for some reason. So he dies in one hit and still drops gear from whatever level you were on when you killed him. I know that this farm is pretty similar to number 4 on the list, but I feel like this one deserved a special spot, just because of how absurd it is. 
When you farm Freddy for the first time, I would recommend taking the elevator up and hitting the fast travel up there so that you don't spawn all the way back at the beginning of the VIP tower when you spawn. Before we get into the number one spot on the list, we actually have a bunch of honorable mentions for this video. Starting off is Jabber Mogwai, which while it is a pretty unique farm, it is essentially a lesser scrap trap farm and doesn't net you a lot of legendaries. Vendor farming is another farm that is an interesting concept, but it is just so boring, and you need to be on Mayhem 10 for it to even be remotely worth it. However, if you are interested in that, then I recommend using the fast travel at the Meridian Metroplex as your spawn point. Revenge of the Cartels can also get you a lot of cool legendaries, especially if you go through and take out all of the mini bosses throughout the map, but having to get the 25 decoders in between each run really kills the efficiency. Then there is also Volt Hala from DLC 4, which can get you a lot of legendaries, but it also puts you on a timer, which is not ideal. But without further ado, on to number 1. Coming in at number 1 is the Circles of Slaughter. The Slaughter Shaft, Slaughter Star, and the Cistern of Slaughter are all incredibly good sources of world drops. If you have the power to handle these challenges, then it is definitely worth spending an afternoon farming the Circles of Slaughters until your game starts to lag. All three of these challenges are full, absolutely full of badass enemies, which drop a crapload of legendary gear when they're killed. By the end of the first round, the floor is usually littered with legendaries. However, after round 5, it kinda just gets ridiculously covered in loot. There's also a trick with the slaughter so that you can repeat round 5 over and over without having to go through the other 4 rounds first. Once you get to the final wave, spawn the boss and then kill the boss, but leave all of the other enemies alive. Once the boss is dead, the missions should still be active, and at this point, you can just fast travel to the spawn point and it will fail that round, which allows you to farm round 5 and its boss endlessly until your game breaks. Out of the three of them, the Slaughter Shaft is definitely the best, but the Slaughter Star is also a pretty solid option. I would recommend mostly avoiding the Cistern though, as a lot of the enemies can be a pain to find, let alone kill. On top of world drops, this can also be an incredibly good farm for Iridium 2, as when killed, the boss will always drop 500 Iridium for the player, which is super awesome for the reroll machine. But anyway, I think that's gonna just about wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one.